Chapter 16, The Atmosphere. Weather and climate. Weather is over a short period of time, constantly changing. Climate is over a long period of time, generalized composite of the weather. Elements of weather and climate. Properties that are measured regularly. Okay, most important elements are temperature, humidity, cloudiness, precipitation, air pressure, wind speed, and direction. Composition of the atmosphere. Air is a mixture of discrete gases. Major components of clean, dry air are nitrogen, which is about 78%, oxygen, about 21%, argon and other gases, and carbon dioxide, which is 0.036%, absorbs heat energy from the Earth. So here we have a uh, proportional volume of gas. So here's a little bit of our atmosphere here. It's over 78% nitrogen, over 20% oxygen tiny bit carbon dioxide, tiny bit argon, and all other gases. Variable components of the air, water vapor, up to 4% of the air's volume, forms clouds and precipitation, absorbs heat energy from the earth. Then aerosols, or tiny solid and liquid particles. Water vapor can condense on these solids, reflect sunlight, help color sunrise and sunset. Ozone, three atoms of oxygen, O3. Distribution is not uniform. Concentrated between 10 to 50 kilometers above the surface, absorbs harmful ultraviolet radiation. Human activity is depleting ozone by adding chlorofluorocarbons. Pressure changes. Pressure is the weight of air above. Average sea level pressure is slightly more than 1,000 millibars, about 14.7 pounds per square inch. Pressure decreases with altitude. One half of the atmosphere is below 3.5 miles. 90% of the atmosphere is below 10 miles. Okay. So atmospheric pressure, variation in altitude. So um, here's our, our altitude in kilometers, our altitude in miles. Okay, so pressure is heaviest where it would closer to sea level as we go up, let's say, to the top of Mount Everest. Um, our air pressure would be 314 millibars, which is much less than 1,000 millibars it is at, at sea level. Atmospheric layers are based on temperature. The troposphere, the bottom layer, temperature decreases with altitude. It's called the environmental lapse rate. 6.5 degrees Celsius per kilometer, and, or 3.5 um, degrees Fahrenheit per thousand feet. The thickness varies. Average height is 12 kilometers. The outer boundary is named the troposphere. The stratosphere is about 12 kilometers to 50 kilometers. Temperature increases at the top. Outer boundary is named the stratopause. The mesosphere is about 50 kilometers to 80 kilometers. Temperature increases. The outer boundary is known as the mesopause. The thermosphere, no well-defined upper limit. It's a fraction of our atmosphere's mass. Gases are moving at high speeds. Okay, so this red line is temperature. Okay, and so each of our bands of, of the atmosphere, different regions, our lowest region is the troposphere. It goes up to just past Mount Everest. And the temperature increases as you go to the top of the troposphere. Then you hit the tropopause. It's that boundary between the troposphere and the stratosphere. In the stratosphere, the temperature kind of stays the same. It starts to warm up. Okay? And especially starts to warm up a lot more after it gets past, past the ozone layer. Then you reach the stratopause, the border boundary between stratosphere and mesosphere. Then in the mesosphere, the temperature, um, the temperature decreases again. Until it gets to the mesopause, where it crosses over into the thermosphere. A very small amount of atmospheric mass up here. Molecules moving real, really fast, that's why they warm up. Um, but then the thermosphere kind of ends by just petering out into space. Earth's motion. The Earth rotates on its axis and revolves around the Sun. The seasons are a result of the changing Sun angle, change the length of daylight. Daily pass of the Sun at 40 degrees North latitude, so the summer solstice, which is June 21st through 22nd, the longest day, the sun angle in northern at, um, latitudes is about 73 and a half degrees. Okay, relationship of sun angle and solar radiation received, well, here in the tropics, uh, you receive almost uh, the sun's at 90 degrees, a lot of strong sunshine. Okay, and then let's say we're up at higher mid latitudes, the sun might be at the same day at 45 degrees, a little less solar energy. In polar regions, the sun angle may be very steep at 30 degrees, so much less solar energy, solar radiation received. Okay, so the longest day uh, in, let's say, northern latitudes, 
uh, so angle would be 73 and a, and a half degrees. In spring, um, spring equinox or fall equinox can be between the highest angle and its lowest angle of the year, so at 50 degrees. And then in winter solstice, the sun angle will be at its lowest. It's going to be where we have winter and cooler temperatures. Seasons are caused by Earth's changing orientation to the sun. The axis is inclined at 23 and a half degrees, and the axis is always pointed in the same direction. So as the Earth rotates, uh, revolves around the sun, this axis is always pointed in the same direction. Special days in the northern hemisphere are summer solstice, June 21st to 22nd. The sun's vertical rays are located in the Tropic of Cancer, 23 and a half degrees north latitude. So here's the sun's angle. Okay, so let's say, I mean, the Earth's angle, the sun's way out this way. This angle stays the same as the Earth revolves around the sun. Okay, so that causes different angles. So here the highest angles are like around the equator, and then the angles are steeper when you get uh, towards the pole. Winter solstice, December 21st to 22nd. The sun's vertical rays are located at the Tropic of Capricorn, which is 23 and a half degrees south latitude. So, and at up tunnel, Equinox or fall equinox, September 22nd through 23rd, the sun's vertical rays located at the equator is 0 degrees latitude. Spring or vernal equinox is March 21st to 22nd, the sun's vertical rays are located at the equator or 0 degrees latitude. Okay, so here we have, let's see, let's start with uh, the summer solstice. Because the angle of the earth as it revolves around the sun, orbits around the sun, the angle stays the same, so sometimes the earth is pointing towards the sun, sometimes away from the sun. Okay, so on June 21st, 22nd, summer solstice is the longest day of the year for the northern hemisphere. The sun is right over the Tropic of uh, Tropic of Capricorn, Tropic of Capricorn. I'm sorry, Tropic of Cancer at 23 and a half degrees north latitude. Okay, so the highest sun angles possible in the northern latitude as Earth orbits to September. Now we're at the vernal equinox, so the sun's rays are right over. Um, Let's see, right over the, the equator. So now the sun angle is a little bit lower. And then when we end up in the winter solstice, the sun's radiation is pointing uh, right over the Tropic of Cancer in the southern hemisphere. Okay, so here we have more of our winter and we have shorter days. So there's more in the dark than in the light. Okay, this is our halfway, like even between night and day in the uh, spring and fall. In the fall and spring equinoxes, Okay, summer, much more light than day here. It keeps orbiting till it's a spring equinox in March, and the sun is over the equator again. Okay. So here, again, another way of looking at this. In June, the sun's rays, we gain more sunshine in the northern hemisphere than the southern hemisphere. In the December winter um, solstice, the southern hemisphere is having its summer, and more sunlight than in the north. And spring, and and um and fall equinoxes uh were pretty much even with sun's radiation centered over the equa the equator. Atmospheric heating. Heat is always transferred from warmer to cooler objects. Mechanisms of heat transfer, conduction through molecular activity, convection is mass movement within a substance, usually in vertical motions, and radiation radiation is electromagnetic radiation. The velocity of radiation is about three hundred kilometers or um, or 186,000 miles per second in a vacuum, speed of light. So here, here's some mechanisms of heat transfer. So by conduction, okay, by, by having a material touch a hotter material, the heat energy is transferred, conduction, burn your hand. Convection, as the water heats up and wants to rise, so it's a vertical motion causing convective cycling. Radiation, the light heat, is traveling at the speed of light uh, out of that fire. So radiation consists of different light wavelengths. Okay, it's electromagnetic spectrum. So gamma rays are very short waves. And you get your X-rays and your ultraviolet rays. And you end up in the visible spectrum and then infrared and microwaves and radio waves. So here's the spectrum are from short to long, gamma rays and X-rays and ultraviolet and our visible light. Okay, remember the fluorescent uh, minerals uh, we looked at uh, earlier in the, in the semester. Uh, ultraviolet light excites those electrons, so the light gets re radiated energy gets re radiated out of the uh, fluorescent minerals, so they're showing invisible light and look like they're glowing. 
So radiation is governed by basic laws. All objects at whatever temperature emit radiation. Hotter objects radiate more total energy per unit area than do color, cool, cooler objects. The hotter the radiating body, the shorter the wavelength of the maximum radiation. Objects that are good absorbers of radiation are good emitters as well. Incoming solar radiation. The atmosphere is largely transparent to incoming solar radiation. Atmospheric effects, low reflection or albedo, uh, how reflective a surface is, the percent that's reflected, scattering, and absorption. Most visible radiation reaches the surface, about 50% is absorbed at Earth's surface. So when solar radiation comes in, all this energy, okay, 50% of the direct radiation reaches um, the land and the sea. About 5% is backscattered by the atmosphere, okay. 20% is absorbed by atmosphere and clouds. 5% is reflected from the land sea surface. 20% okay, is reflected from the clouds. So 30% 30, 30 is lost, by, lost to space by reflection and scattering. Okay, but, okay so here a reflection happens when, when a solar ray hits a water vapor molecule, then it bounces off, basically is reflected. That the wave is, is bounced back in a mirror, mirror angle. Scattering is when a ray hits a particle in the atmosphere and it gets split and okay, scatters. Earth re-radiates radiation, this is terrestrial radiation, at longer wavelengths. Longer wavelengths terrestrial radiation absorbed by carbon dioxide, water vapor in the atmosphere, and lower atmospheric heating from Earth's surface. This heating in the atmosphere is called the greenhouse effect. So as solar radiation comes down to the Earth and warms up the land or the ocean, when it re-radiates that energy, it's going to be a longer wavelength. This water wavelength loves to be absorbed by the carbon dioxide and water vapor. Both carbon dioxide and water vapor are both greenhouse gases. As they warm up, then they're going to re-radiate the energy. So the lower atmosphere, that's why it tends to warm up. And that's the greenhouse effect. Daily and maximum, t minim maximum and minimum temperature measurements are important temperature measurement. We also want to know the average temperature each day, uh, the daily range, the monthly mean, the annual mean and the annual temperature range. So for two locations in Canada, we got very different temperature graphs here. So down here at the bottom, we got the months of the year, and then here we got the temperature in Fahrenheit. In Vancouver, it never seems to get nearly as cold as Winnipeg, and Winnipeg gets warmer than Vancouver does. If you look at this map, you'll see Vancouver is over by the ocean, and Winnipeg is very continental. What's going on here is land will heat more and cool more than water. So heat faster and cool faster than water. So, so in con very continental regions, you're going to have a greater temperature variation over the course of the year than you do in very marine environments, which would be much more moderate. Human perception of temperature. Well, anything that influences the rate of heat loss from the body also influences the sensation of temperature. So important factors are air temperature, relative humidity, wind speed, and sunshine. Receipt of, recept of um, solar radiation is the most important control. So the more solar radiation you're in, the warmer you're going to feel. Okay. Uh, let's see, other important controls, differential heating of, of land and water. Land heats more rapidly than water, land gets hotter than water, land cools faster than water, and land gets cooler than water. Other important controls, altitude, geographic position, cloud cover, and albedo, or solar reflectance. Temperature maps. Iso isotherms are lines connecting places of equal temperature. Temperatures are adjusted to sea level. January and July are used for analysis because they represent temperature extremes. Global temperature patterns. Temperature decreases poleward from the tropics. Isotherms exhibit a latitudinal shift within the seasons. So a, a zero degree line may shift from from north in the summer to south, get further south in the winter. Warmest and cooler temperatures occur over land. So global temperature patterns. In the southern hemisphere, the isotherms can be straighter. Isotherms are more stable. The isotherms show ocean currents, okay, because the water is going to impact the te air temperature. And then the annual temperature range will have a smaller annual temperature range near the equator and will increase with the increase in latitude greatest over continental locations. So continents heat more and cool more than water. Okay, so here's a world mean sea level temperatures in January. 
So of course our very cold regions are going to be the north, okay, north's going to be cooler, and the southern hemisphere, okay, and take and look here where the zero degree line is, okay, because then in July that zero degree line, well now it's down here because winter is now in the southern hemisphere and northern hemisphere is now in the summer. And notice that these isotherms are much straighter in the southern hemisphere or change, they, they, they change a lot more in the northern hemisphere to the influence of the continents. Okay, ozone, this little ozone and Dobson units, our ozone was thicker in, in 1979 than it's now in 2009, and it's much thinner. Okay, so that's something that's also been changing over time, it's related to an atmosphere. End of that chapter.